Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with potato pepper frittata. That's right, frittata is by far my favorite summer lunch treat. So simple, perfect for using those summer vegetables. All right, in my case, Michelle brought home these gorgeous Italian frying peppers from the market, and I had some leftover cooked potatoes, so I said to myself, this looks like a job for frittata. So that's what we're gonna do. Step one, I'm gonna cut up my peppers now this will of course work with any pepper. These long Italian frying peppers generally don't have a lot of seeds. So I just cut them like that. If you get to the top where it gets thicker and there's a little seed pot in there, take it out. You don't want seeds in this, but that looks good. So I'm gonna chop up my peppers. I had some red and green, obviously. I'm gonna chunk up my cooked potatoes. Those are just Yukon gold. And like I said, any fresh summer veggies you wanna use are awesome in this. And if you have any leftover side dish veggies from last night's meal, that's pretty much why frittatas were invented, okay? And besides the vegetables, of course, you're going to need eggs. So I'm going to have you beat 12 eggs in a bowl and have those ready. So once those are beaten, you can just set those aside. And we're going to head over to the stove to get this frittata party started right. And that means putting a pan on medium heat with some olive oil and some sliced bacon. You can make this vegetarian, but don't. And I'm going to cook that almost crisp, which is, of course, going to render out lots of fat. When the bacon looks like that, I'm going to dump in my veggies. And we're going to stay right on medium heat, and you're going to cook those peppers for about three minutes. All right, we don't want them falling apart, but we do want them softening and sweetening a little bit. And once I think the peppers are good, I'm going to turn off the heat. I'm going to tilt the pan, and we're going to do the old swipe out the oil with paper towel trick. By the way, I did invent that. All right, once most of the oil's been removed, and you want to leave a little bit in there, we're going to go ahead and season it a little bit. So I'm going to add a little pinch of pepper flakes, maybe a little drier fresh herb. That was a little pinch of marjoram, a little salt and pepper. All right, I'm gonna put the heat back on. All right, the heat should be on medium. And we're gonna go ahead and dump in our potatoes. And the potatoes are already cooked, so we're basically just warming them through. So once the potatoes are heated through, and like I said, that's only gonna take a couple minutes, go ahead and pour in your eggs, and then just take your spatula and just start mixing it up like you're making scrambled eggs kind of scraping along the bottom, kind of folding everything in and over itself. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, why'd you use a stainless steel pan? It's going to totally stick. You're going to be amazed that it doesn't. It looks like it now, right? It looks like it's totally sticking to the sides and it's going to be impossible to get out. But that's not the case. You'll see. All right, so we're going to keep doing that. And basically, we want to get this to the point of very, very, very soft scrambled eggs. Now, traditionally, the bottom of a frittata is cooked. It's then flipped over on a plate, slid back in the pan to finish cooking the other side. But if you have a broiler like I do, that step is completely unnecessary. So we're going to do ours without flipping, as you'll see. All right, once that gets to the texture of very soft scrambled eggs, and it looks something like that, still very runny, very loose, but starting to come together, I want you to turn off the heat... And at this point, if you're using cheese, you're going to go ahead and put that on top. I'm using an amazing goat's milk feta that just was knock your socks off delicious. All right, you could use just plain goat cheese here, regular feta, cheddar, almost anything works. And we're going to leave most of the cheese on top, but I'm going to take the spatula and give it the old polka polka so a little bit goes down into it. And at that point, we're going to go into the oven under a broiler. I have the broiler on high. And five minutes later, the eggs were set. The top was browned, and I was pretty happy because I was about 10 minutes away from eating an amazing lunch. And as I mentioned earlier, for whatever reason, this doesn't stick after it cooks. You see that? All that stuff that was stuck to the sides just kind of pulls away a little bit. And you'll see there as I slice this in wedges, it comes out perfectly clean. I can't explain that. I assume it has something to do with science, but it really does work. And that's it. Throw it on a plate. You can definitely serve it hot. I think it tastes best just warm, but that's personal opinion. You can certainly eat it as is, but if you're super cool and you have some amazingly sweet ripe cherry tomatoes in your kitchen, you'll slice those up, toss them with a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe a couple drops of extra virgin olive oil, some fresh oregano, and that is a simple, rustic, hearty masterpiece. This is one of those recipes you can literally make different every time. It's always delicious. It always works. It's just a great, great technique, even in the middle of winter. But right now, late summer, there's tons of awesome peppers and potatoes and onions. It's really good with squash, zucchini, things like that. So as always, I encourage you to experiment. Put in what you think would be good, and it will be good. All right? So I hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.